Who will be next? Why has practically every great producer and or genius of progress been stopped in the past and is still being stopped in the present? Daily we hear and read of the atrocities being committed nonsensically in this country and abroad. A few years ago, I was attacked and beat up by a gang of six youths demanding money, probably for drugs. Who are these young people walking around bent forward like gorillas, with ink imprinted in their skin and pierced with everything from bones to metal? uttering bovine-like sounds that don't even resemble English, carrying portable radios that blast the ears of passers-by with ugly lyrics full of hate. Is the present way of life so apathetic that happiness must be experienced by devolving to a natural state of life, much like the caveman? What is happening to humanity? What is happening to this, the freest country in the world? Is it possible that we are being suppressed by a small number of malevolent individuals in high positions who believe that in order to survive well, somebody has to suffer? Some say society is lost, but who is society but me and thee? Mahatma Gandhi said, when there is war, then I must be failing within myself. Krishnamurti said, you, you are the world and the world is you. Mystical and confusing as these metaphors are, their creators simply meant that we should become responsible for ourselves and as such the world becomes freer. Now, I'd like to interject something here. In order for us to be responsible for ourselves, we have to have a good grasp on what a sin is we have to have a proper definition of a sin, not by what the religionists have said, no, nor by what anybody else has said, not even what I'm saying. But think about it according to a definition which I'll give to you right now. A sin, this is extremely important that you know exactly. A sin is an offense against the comfort in survival of another person. So with this definition you see that the majority of things that you think you've sinned about, they are not sins at all. So this alone should free you right here and now. What people call a sin nowadays was something that was taught them by tradition, conditioning, religion, and all, call it all kinds of jigaboos. Uh, it is absolutely necessary that this week you think about the definition of sin. I tell you right now, without any doubt, that nothing is a sin unless it is a off an offense or some kind of act that interferes with a person's comfort or ability to survive. So most of the things nowadays that we think are sins, especially young people that don't know any better yet, they're not sins at all. So right here, you should feel a load off your chest. I say, let us take responsibility for our own individual evolution. What goes on in our minds in the circle of communication that we carry with us everywhere we go, regardless of the size of its circumference. If we can't change the world, then let us change ourselves. With ourselves changed, the world will be so.
We don't need to join groups to save the world. All you have to do is save your own universe. That is all you're required to do. Save your own universe. And this is where the proper definition of sin comes in. Now, John Lennon's death was the end of an era, but the beginning of a new one in the United States. A new era that humanity can destroy or use to create another golden age. We create it with re-evolution. No, not a revolution with guns, force, and authority, but re-evolution within ourselves. Now is the time to re-evaluate all our beliefs and lies that keep us in slavery. Now is the time to say no to the authorities who would enslave us. Now is the time to reevaluate the beliefs that made one have a nervous breakdown over not being able to turn on the desired channel on TV, and the lies that engender the three most damaging evils in society, dishonesty with self, dishonesty with reality, and false pride. While this is being written, there are millions unhappy, sick, starving all over the face of the globe. How can we smugly interact with one another, exchanging smug smiles, smug jokes, smug kisses, eating smug foods, and getting smugly fat when little children, yes, even in this country, with their little skinny hands outstretched, beg for an ounce of love, if not food, from their moms and dads, whom they revere as gods, only to be told to be still, to be this or that, to believe this or that, etc., etc. These children become the crime of the future. As you will read later, Khalil Gibran said on children, quote, Give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts, unquote. It is practically impossible for a child to turn to crime if he was shown true love and freedom of thought in childhood. Yes, true love, not Hollywood love, Hollywood love, no sweetie, tweety affection. But what is true love? This is where we fail. This is where personal re-evolution comes in. This is where evolution comes in. Love is not what we were told it is. Love is the outcome of personal re-evolution. For, through re-evolution, we become free of the lies and false beliefs that we ourselves created and the lies of the tradition that were incul inculcated upon us for the past 2,000 years. We begin to experience self-love only when we start cleaning ourselves up. And with self-love, we identify with others and therefore love them. Only then can there be love and freedom. This freedom leads to trust. And when we trust one another, there will be peace. And then, as John Lennon sang, we will dance in the sky with diamonds. So, can we have a great new world? We can, if we start now creating it. Let us begin with the following 12 initial actions to create the new world. I don't think we have time to go into the 12 initial actions. This will be the subject for the next class. Thanks for listening, and I hope you feel lighter. <laughs>